Cataractcoach.com, a resident case with an upside down IOL. You got to remember, S is for stupid mistake. Now here's the case. This is a good resident. And I'm not saying the resident has any issues. The issue is not being aware. So there's a three-piece lens that the resident loaded. And already you can see it's going in the wrong way. The injector's upside down. That leading haptic kind of goes in. It looks like it's in a reasonable seven configuration, but there it just flips. As the optic comes out, it flips. And now look, that leading haptic is in the S formation. So what are you going to do? So the answer is, oh, not that. Because now the lens is basically in the eye upside down. So you see that S formation. You can't leave it like this. This three-piece lens is angulated. So the haptics are at a 5 or 10 degree angulation to the optic. So if you leave it in the eye upside down, the eye well will sit too close to the back surface of the iris. You can actually cause a pupillary block syndrome like this. So you need to get the lens flipped back around. The refractive outcome can change as well. And this is just not a good thing to do. So if you see this S configuration, you got to know it's upside down and we got to flip it. So let's revise this. Let me show you. There's the correct orientation. It looks like that Z configuration. The S is for stupid mistake. And we all make stupid mistakes. But let me show you what I mean by figuring out how it goes. See, look at the leading haptic. It's coming out correctly. Remember, that leading haptic looks like the 7, and the trailing haptic looks like the capital letter L. That's correct. And the lens came out as we expected from the injector. And this is an old case that we had here in Cataract Coach, video number 156 from a couple years ago. And now we can dial in that second haptic, and now it's in the bag, and this ultramyopic patient looks great. But what if the haptic comes out the other way? Let me show you. So here's the lens being injected in the eye, and look at the haptic orientation. It's twisted in the injector. So as we start to deliver it, we notice that haptic is not in the correct orientation. So we'll flip it around. It has to come out like a number seven. There it is. And now turn the injector tip to make sure the optic comes out. Now look how the injector tip turns over. Now the optic comes out the normal orientation. And turn again to make sure that trailing haptic now is that capital letter L. So 7L is that orientation. So the overall haptic formation looks like the letter Z and never like the letter S. S is for stupid mistake. The doctor's not stupid. I'm not saying that the mistake is. So we're going to flip it in the eye, holding it with forceps. We're going to put a spatula here, and we're going to twist that optic, and there it goes. But you got to be careful of that haptic. And look at the posterior capsule. Is that just a wrinkle, or is the posterior capsule now damaged? Hmm, hard to say. Let's try to get that haptic. See, the haptic's still stuck in the iris now. Inject more viscoelastic. That certainly looks like a damaged posterior capsule now. So all this happened because we just weren't sure how to load the lens and deliver the lens. And this is a mistake that you could have prevented by really studying those cataract coach videos. So there you see the posterior capsule is open. Let's be honest about this. No denial now. Those wrinkles are not just wrinkles. Those are ruptures. But the anti-haloid face intact. Let's put more viscoelastic here. Let's get this lens centered. And put the lens in the sulcus now, and the patient will be fine. Now the haptics are in the correct orientation. And so that lens can then be dialed into the sulcus, and the patient will do fine. I can tell you this patient in the post-op period had a nice outcome. Uh, the a reasonable refraction, a little bit more myopia than we expected because this lens was in, originally intended to go in the capsular bag, but it now it was in the sulcus, and the rexus was such that an optic capture could not really be performed. So now let's dial this into the sulcus, nice and easy, and keeping that anterior chamber full of viscoelastic so that we don't get damage to the anterior hyaluronic face. You don't want to have vitreous prolapse. So dialing it around, there's the second haptic, and we'll get those both in the sulcus, center off the lens. And remember, this has the correct posterior angulation because these haptics are angulated on that optic. And so this is good. It won't sit too close to the posterior surface of the iris. It'll sit in a very appropriate position just in front of the anterior capsule rim. And so now dialing the lens a little bit more around just to get better support and making sure it stays centered. And that looks pretty darn good. 
Now at this point, what do we got to do? Let's get that last haptic. Looks, oh, that last haptic is not really in the bat, uh, in the sulcus yet. So let's get that dialed in. Now it looks pretty reasonable, right? Uh, now it looks like it's in the sulcus. Rotate it a little bit more. And again, make sure the haptics are secure in the sulcus. If you've missed and one haptic is behind the anterior capsule, you're going to have a dislocated lens in the post-op period, in the immediate post-op period. So right now that lens is not so centered. So bring it centrally. There you go. And still looks like there's no vitreous prolapse by some miracle. And that looks great. Good. Lens is in good position. And now finally, we need to finalize this by uh, putting some myocol or an agent to bring down the pupil. So we're injecting the myocol slowly, putting a little bit right there into the iris stroma itself. Nicely like putting it around and around. That looks great. And then you see the pupils coming down with no peaked parts of it. So there's no vitreous prolapse. You can also put some triamcinolone in the eye if you need to. And so now with the eye full of viscoelastic, putting in more myostat in the eye or myocol in the eye. Remember, myocol will work slower, uh, faster, but last longer. Myostat, even though it has stat in the name, doesn't work right away. It takes a while to work and lasts for a day or two. So now getting the eye inflated to normal pressure, and definitely, let's put a suture in this case. We don't want to have any issues. After the suture goes in, we can do a little bit more uh, aspiration of the viscoelastic.